Section 2.3 is on bases other than 10. <clears throat> and I have a little note here. You can see page 37 in the book. And we can start out <clears throat> by using our standard base 10 blocks to even represent decimals. So I have this table here. <clears throat> and notice I'm letting a flat represent one whole now. So before we were saying a flat was a hundred ones, but now we're saying that a flat represents 100 cubes, which each represent one one hundredth. So if you think about say money, you know, those would represent pennies and then 100 pennies gives you $1. Right, so we're letting the flat represent one whole. And then if you divided that into 10, it would be kind of like dime. We're talking about money. Then the longs represent one tenth. And the units represent one one hundredth. And so if we do this, we could represent <clears throat> numbers like, um, you know, three, it's hard to kind of highlight here, but three of those longs there, those represent tenths. So that would be three tenths in fraction form or in decimal form, you would have 0.3. Again, think about money, that's like 0 0.30 or 30 cents, right? You have three dimes. This number in base 10 blocks, Right, we have nine units and each unit now is worth like a penny or one one hundredth. So you have nine hundredths and in decimal form that's 0 0.09 or nine cents. And this number where we have two flats, four longs and three units. So that's kind of like two dollars and 43 cents, right? You have two dollars four dimes and three pennies. Uh, a mixed numeral that would be two and 43 one hundredths, or as a true fraction, it would be an improper fraction, 243 one hundredths. So you wanna be fluid with your number sense and understanding the place value system, understanding how to represent numbers, including decimals in different ways using these place, base 10 blocks and how to go between fractions and decimals. And then going the other way, if you were given a number here in blue, how would you represent that using base 10 blocks? So we have like five dimes or five longs and seven pennies or seven of those units. And for like $2 and one cent, you would have two flats and you would have one penny for that one cent or one one hundredth. And four cents or four one hundredths, you just have like the four pennies there. All right, so now let's look at a whole different base system. So before in 2.2, we learned our regular base 10 system. <clears throat> but we could also understand different base systems and all future elementary school teachers need to learn this so you can abstract the idea of a place value system. And sometimes when you're really super comfortable and familiar with something like our base 10 system, we just don't have that compassion for our students who are really struggling with the idea behind the place value system. So if you really understand the idea of a place value system, the base can be any base. So let's think about a base 10 system. So the exact same idea as our base 10 system, except now we're using base five. So anytime you have five of something, groups of five, instead of groups of 10, you move to a different place value, right? So we always have the ones place. The ones really represents our number, right? When we're counting something, we're looking at individual discrete objects. Those are ones. And 
this is why we also learned to begin with the difference between a number, that concept of a number, an actual quantity, and the numeral that represents the number of things. Okay, so all bases has, have the ones place. And now as soon as you have five ones, you would have a group of fives. And so that's the fives place. And then as soon as you had five of those, you would group them together and you would have the five squareds place, five cubes, five to the fourth, et cetera. And going the opposite direction past the decimal point or a basimal point, now it's called in a different base, decimal, that root des, D-E-C, um, that's kind of like decade, et cetera. It stands for 10. <clears throat> so in general, we use a basimal system depending on the base. And so in base five, you divide by five going to the right and you get the one fifths place, the one twenty fifths place, the one over one hundred and twenty fifths place, et cetera. So five to the negative one, five to the negative two, et cetera. In the base 10 system, remember the only digits that we had were zero through nine. Because as soon as you had one more than nine, a group of 10, you didn't write 10 in the ones place. Oh no, my friend. You would group them together and exchange those for one long. And so then you're in the tens place. So we don't have a single digit for 10. We use two places. So in base five, the only digits we have are zero, one, two, three, and four. We have no numeral for five because as soon as you have five of something, you exchange it for a long and you're in the fives place. So here, and I know my kind of lecture notes got a little messy, but suppose all of these circles here are things and all of these represent some number of the number of circles, okay? In our base 10 system, if you just count them, right? I have nine on the top and then five and five. Uh, did I count that right? Nine and five and five, yeah. So there's one group of 10 and nine ones. I have 19 circles there. Right, so you could group together one group of 10, and then you would have nine left. In base five, you wanna to group together the groups of five. And so again, it's, it's kinda of hard to see. I did use different colors, but as soon as you had you know, five of those, you would circle them. And you can see that there are three groups of five, that's 15, and then there are four single circles left. In base three, you wanna to group together groups of threes. And as soon as you have three ones, you would exchange it for a long. So I did that in the blue here. So there's you know three here, three here, three here, three here, three here, three there, and you would have um, so what six groups of three and then as soon as you have really three longs you would exchange those for a flat so that's that little notation here three longs or three groups of three gets exchanged for one flat or a three squared. So you have two flats and you're left with one unit left over. So I know that writing is a bit perhaps difficult to make sense of with all the different colors there. So let's go back to our um, base 10 E manipulatives. And suppose I just have a bunch of ones so I just put seven of them there. Um, so that's the concept of a number, right? Like how many things are actually there? We can write the numeral to represent this quantity of 
little blocks. You can use different numerals for it. But there is a quantity and number of blocks there. So in our normal base 10 system, we know that there are seven. We would use the numeral and the word seven to represent that number. But in base three, for example, every time you had three blocks, you would create a long. Okay, so in base three, I have two longs and one unit. So that would be two, one, base three. So that's the numeral for that. Two, one, base three. Try to write that. We always write the base using a word if it's not in base 10. Now, if I wanted to use a different base to represent the quantity up here, suppose I wanted to use base five, right? So I still have the same number of blocks, but in base five, as soon as I have five blocks, I group them together and exchange them for one long. There's four, five, and I have two longs left. So in base five, we would say there's one long and two units. So again, I still have the same number of blocks. I'm just expressing it using different numerals. Okay, same quantity of little blocks on the page written with different numerals. So that's the idea here with different bases. So here's an example, write in expanded form and convert to base 10. And we're given 2, 1, 3, base 5. Okay, so in base 5, those digits are all in a different place and they have a different value, right? We still have two flats, but now the flats are worth 5 squared or 25. There are 25 units in a flat when you're in base 5. And there's one long, a long is now worth five. And there are three ones. There's ones are always the same. That's that idea of a number. So you have two of those 25s plus one five plus three one, ones. And so that's 50 plus five plus three is 58. You know, you could kind of think of this table as representing like how many quarters do you have, like money? How many nickels do you have? How many pennies do you have, right? You have two quarters, one nickel, and three pennies. What's the value of that in our base 10 system? It's 58. Um, so here you have four quarters, two nickels, and four pennies. Right? Each digit has a different place value, depending on where it's placed in that order. Right? The places have a different value, just like in our base 10 system. And this is the same kind of difficulty that your future students will have making sense of our base 10 system because they won't really understand like, well, why does the four mean hundreds if you're in base 10? Because it's in that place. If it's in the hundreds place, it would mean four hundreds. Okay, so I have, again, kids often learn this as well. Um, a worksheet using base five. 
And so this worksheet, they're calling the flats mats, and they're calling the longs strips, and the units, they're still calling units. Again, there are lots of different names, but it's, it's usually pretty easy to figure out what they're talking about. Right, so 39 in base 10, like how many mats could you use, how many strips, and then how many units. Okay, so you could kind of work through this, and then going the other way, what would the base 10 number be? And I've got the solutions in there. Now, when you're counting in base 10, we know how to count, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10, right? In base 5, you count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then when you add 1, because that's what you're doing when you're counting, you keep adding 1. It's like visually, if you keep adding 1 unit, and then what number do you use to represent that, or what numeral do you use to represent that quantity or that, that number idea? So in base five, after four, you add one more unit, and now you're at one zero base five, because you have one group of five and zero ones. And then you have one long and one unit, and then you have one long and two units, one long and three units, one long and four units. And when you add another one, you now have five long uh, units. And so you can exchange that for another long. And you have two longs and zero units, et cetera. And I just put brackets around here and wrote the five. So I don't have to keep writing five on each numeral there. Right, in base six, you'd go zero, five. And then once you have a group of six, you have one long et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so for instance here, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five. And then once you add another one, you have a group of six and you would have your third long, et cetera. And we could also make number lines in different bases like here in base six. So it goes up to five and then one zero. We don't call it 10 because 10 doesn't exist in base six. We call it one zero, and then one one, one two, et cetera. In base two, you only have the digits zero and one. Right? That's called a binary system. That's how computers work. They're just strings of zeros and ones. Um, so you could count zero, one, and then as soon as you have a group of two, you exchange it for one long, and then you have zero ones. Add one, one. And then when you add another one, you have two ones, you would exchange it for a long, but then you have two longs, so you exchange that for a flat. So you have one flat, zero longs, and zero ones. And then you add one, you have one zero one. If you add another one, now you have two units. You could exchange that for one flat, et cetera, et cetera. All right, now converting from base 10 to base five. So again, if the numeral doesn't have a base written on it, we know that it's base 10. So convert 37 to base five. So 37, think about the number that that numeral represents. It's like you have 37 individual units or like 37 pennies, for example. And we want to write it in our base 5 system. So this is what our base 5 system looks like. 5 to the 0, the 1's place. 5 to the 1, the 5's place. 5 squared, the 25's place and five cubes, etc. So, you know, kind of like we just did with the virtual manipulative, if you had 37 ones, as soon as you can group five of them together, you would exchange it for a long. And if you had five longs together, you would exchange it for a flat. It's kind of like if you had 37 cents, how many nickels would you have? and how many quarters would you have, 
right? So it's actually easier to start with the biggest first. And we know that you can't make 125. So the biggest kind of coin you could exchange pennies for would be a quarter. So you could make one quarter out of that. So over here, I've got 37 and I subtract 25 because I've made one quarter. And then I would have 12 pennies left. Out of the 12 pennies, I could make two nickels. That's 10. And then I would have two pennies left. Right, so base five is kind of nice because we can actually think of coins. And that's something that we're familiar with, right? Quarters, nickels, and pennies. But it works the same way in general. So convert 46 to base three. So again, if you had 46 like pennies or units, how could you group them together? As soon as you had three, you could exchange for a long. As soon as you had three longs, you could exchange for a flat, et cetera, et cetera. But it's easier to start at the biggest like piece. So I cannot make this size piece because I don't have 81. I only have 46. But I can definitely make this size piece. Right, so if I make one of those, I would have 19 individual units left. And then I could make two flats out of that. These are flats. And so each flat is worth nine. I could make two of those, that's 18. And then I would have one unit left over. Okay, so 46 is one, two, zero, one, base three. And again, in base three, the only digits are zero, one, and two. Because as soon as you have three of something, you exchange it for a different size piece convert 50 to base two. So you wanna start out again, writing your table. And I stopped here at 64 because I cannot even make that one of those, right? The biggest size piece I could put units together to make is a piece that has 32 of those units. So I can make one of those and then I have 18 left. So I can make one of these, and then I have two left. So two goes into that place. That's how many twos. And you have zero of the other size pieces. Now for other basimals, right? Converting to base 10. So 3.42 base six, right? That's three of those ones. And then four of those six to the negative ones. And then two of those six to the negative twos. And so you could just figure out what that value is using fractions. All right, so in the end here, where you're adding um, thirds and eighteenths, you wanna to convert to the same denominator. So I multiplied the thirds on the bottom there by six to get eighteenths. So I could add 12 eighteenths and one eighteenth is 13 eighteenths. Right, and there's just another example in base two. So that's it for 2.3.